Fish on, man. I felt that bite on, on the drop. Now, how am I gonna get him up here without getting tangled up? Oh, there's a giant one right there. Come on. Oh, there you Yep, got one. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, man. Beautiful bread toasted. Oh, that's the secret of the dish. I don't have too much time to fish. It's already incoming tide, and I probably got about an hour to fish before this area is covered with water. I'm on a camping trip. One night, I gotta catch my dinner right now. That's the plan. This is my goodie bag of fishing tackle. I'm only gonna be fishing swim baits today. So we've got Berkeley Gulp, the grubs, those six inch grubs. I stopped by Bodega Tackle and got a bunch of these crazy looking swim baits with these curly tails. I've got these guys too. These were a good price. And you know that brown color, that Greenland color is great out here. Northern California, Oregon, Washington. But the thing that I'm most excited to share with you, remember a couple months ago, I was talking about making my own long shank jig head. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be a game changer. Look at this. So we've got half ounce, one ounce, and one and a half ounce. But this is what I'm most excited about. These half ounce, long shank, big hook jig heads. Because you know when you fish these half ounce ones, usually the hook only comes to about there curves up by the time you put the big swim bait on there's no hook exposed you cannot get a good hook set but these are going to change the game for rock fishing from shore especially when it's calm like this and you can cast out the lightest lure you can even when it's 40 feet deep a half ounce jig head it's almost like fishing with no weight you let it you can just let it stay there in the strike zone let it get the attention of whatever fish it is and we got the long shank hook. Oh my gosh, I'm so confident in this, but I'm not gonna say anything because every time I do say something, I never catch a fish. So we're gonna rig up this Berkeley Gulp, cast out, hopefully get some food for dinner. Woo, woo, woo. Give me chills just looking at this thing, look at that. I'm starting out with the spool of 50 pound braid and 40 pound leader just because if I do get snagged, I don't want to lose this. This half ounce jig head is just the prototype. Let's see if this new rig warrants my excitement. First cast. It is a little wet up here, so I do have to be careful. If it is wet, you know the water has been splashing up here occasionally. First cast. Okay. 50 pound braid casts pretty well. I'm gonna tighten down my drag. Oh, even tighter than that. Even a little bit tighter than that. Okay, we're good. Okay, that's bottom, we're on bottom. Do a slow, slow retrieve. Pretty confident we'll get bit. Just gotta find the right spot first. Those waves are scary. Man, here they come. Woo! Maybe I better go to a safer area. I'm gonna go to the opposite side. I'm thinking the swell is coming from the southwest and the opposite side of this fishing area will be a lot more protected. That's what I'm hoping at least. Let's go check it out. A bit more calm over here, but still a little treacherous. Oh man, I can cast this thing far. It makes you feel so small when you see the swell rising eight feet. That's exactly what's happening. It's just so intimidating. You could just be swept off this thing so easily. Man, look at those waves coming in. Man, look at that. That is intimidating. Does it die off here or what? It just barely dies off. But tide is rising. Sketchy, sketchy. All right, here we go. Another spot, a little calmer. This is where the half ounce is nice and situated. Freaking piece of kelp right here.
Oh, fish, fish, fish. Oh, oh, fish. You saw that? I know you saw that. That was definitely a fish. Messed up my swim bait though, I think. I need to go get another one. Oh man, bit off my tail. It bit off my tail, but I think the swim bait was messed up anyway. Just wasn't staying put right there. When I cast it, it was just coming up. So I'm gonna go change that out. Very promising. Oh, fish on, man. I felt that bite on, on the drop. I knew that wasn't the bottom. I knew that was a fish. Now, how am I going to get him up here without getting tangled up? Oh, he came off. Did he? No, he's on there still. Oh, but he's, he's wrapped up in the seaweed. Woo, woo. Give him a little slack. Oh man, I was dropping it and dropping it and dropping it and I felt it bump with the slack. I knew it wasn't bottom though. Man, he might not even be on here anymore. Give it some slack, let him see if he can swim off. Yep, 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 there he is. Get up here, come on up, come on up here. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, that's a nice lean cod. That's a keeper, man. Wait for this next wave to pull him up. I think he's hooked well, but, and he's calm right there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Let's go. Oh, how satisfying is that? That's a keeper lean cod. And that's our dinner. Perfect hook. That's actually close. Let's go measure it. That should, they need to be 22 inches, as you know. On the little half ounce. Perfectly hooked. Love it when it gets hooked right through that little nostril. Right there in the nose. Oh man. He's just 21. Dang, turns out he's just 21 inches. Just small. So, I'll put him back in the water. Don't want to keep him out for too long. Close. Good sign though. We'll release him back to his home. And so in this situation, it's not exactly figuring out the fish. It's more about figuring out the rig and how to fish the rig pop properly. Man, I was just fishing here and back to the spot where I got that bite. No bites for fish, but as I was retrieving it, as I was retrieving this swim bait, I seen a, something following it. And then I look around and there's a few of them. So it looks like a little school of good sized fish. Let's see what they are. Little jig, let's see if they're here still. See if they're here and see if they're hungry. This fish on. Oh, that feels good. That feels good. Nice one. Oh yeah, hey, that's dinner right there. For sure, come on up. Woo! Hey, if this is all I can catch, I will take it all day. Look at the size of that blue rockfish, man. You don't see these blue rockfish every day this size, holy moly. That was fast, so I'm gonna go put him in the live well. This one's a little cooler, I think. Yeah, we'll leave him right here. All right, there's one. I almost thought that was a ling cod by the way it was fighting. That was a big fish. This is like a very small jig, probably 20 gram jig. Gonna loosen my drag just a bit so it doesn't pull it out its lip. I'm not going for a big ling cod now. No, there's another one. Yep. Oh, it feels like a good one too. Oh, not too big. Oh, this one's smaller. That could be good live bait. All right, they're biting. Oh man, there goes my shoes. 
Now I got a boot full of salt water. Dang it. Oh, there they are. There they are, right there in front of me. Yep, yep, yep. All right, watch this, watch this. Right in front of me. Oh, there he is, there he is, got him, got him. That's not bad. It's not a bad sized fish. That's right on the verge of not to keep, so I'll let him go. Right there. We'll swim it in between them. Oh, there's a giant one right there. I don't know about giant, but dude, these are big. Oh, I found a little school of them right next to me over here. What's going on? They're not in front of me. They're to my left. Oh, right here, right here. Shouldn't, oh, okay, come on, come on, come on. Just get it, get it, get it. Come on. Oh, there you Yep, got one. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a nice one. Oh, perfect. We'll just let him sit there for about 10 seconds. If we can get another one, I'm not even worried about him. He's going to stay perfectly alive. Oh, I found the little school. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, I see him. I can see him. That's so cool. Oh, my gosh. I see them all. Oh, gosh. They look so good. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's another good one. Yeah, baby. Come on up. Oh, it came off. Drag's too tight. Oh, well, as long as I didn't lose the, the jig, but whew, there's another one. Let's put these guys in the cool, fresh water. This one looks good. I'll, I'll keep them right here. One, two. I've been presented this opportunity to load up on black rockfish, blue rockfish. I'm not going to let this opportunity pass by. Water's so crystal clear, I can see them. Nothing more fun than seeing the fish you're catching and then eating them because these are delicious fish. Oh, this fish. Woo! 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 Keeper size. Yep. Another one. What a beautiful fish. That's three. Put shade over his mouth. Oh, there's another one. Quickly. Oh, got him quick. Got him quick this time. Yoo hoo! That one's a little bit small. These are some hardy fish, so. Just letting you know, don't want him near where I'm casting. Right, let's put this one away. Nice keeper. Be right back. One on the bottom. One there. Come on, big guy. Get down there. And this little school could be gone in an instant, so I'm really trying to take advantage of it while I can. There we go. Came up for it. Little guy. See, all these little guys, we're letting them go. Letting them grow. But the bigger ones we're taking. No need to retrieve it, just bring it, put it at a depth that you like, and just keep it there. Yep, oh, that's a good one. Oh, uh, never mind. Small one, another small one. There's a whole school of them down there. See you later, buddy. Oh, keeper size. That's just keeper size. Yep. Is it? Let me see. Oh, for sure, a couple good fillets on that bad boy. That'll put us right at four. That was a good one. Let him fight, I'm gonna let him fight. I don't wanna lose it. Everyone counts right now. This is a good fish. It's a very nice one. I'm just gonna let him get a little bit tired and then pull him up with the wave. If he swims up, I'll just pull him straight up. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. Right up here, baby. Woo, let's go. See that, I switched it out to this Chrome 30 Fisherman's Life Jiggy Jig. Yeah, that's a nice chunky fat one. That's number five. And don't worry, you know, like these are the pelagic rockfish. So they'll stay here for a while. They'll go deep into the ocean. They'll change spots. These are not like the cabazon, the lingcod, the grass rockfish, those yellow uh, china rockfish. Those all stay within about a 200 feet diameter of where they were born. So if you catch those, yeah, you might be hurting the population. But when you catch these pelagics, at least in my opinion, they're a lot more sustainable. Well, yeah, I don't think I mentioned this before, but I was completely out of stock of these Fisherman's Life travel rods, but fully restocked now. So if you want one, get them while you can. Finally got a good one. It's been a while, but I finally jigged up a good one. Oh, that's a nice one. Woo, yeah, baby. That's another keeper size. That's six. There you go. All right, y'all, let's get out of here, cook some food, relax, enjoy the sunset. 
pretty cool. Didn't lose a single rig today. That's a record. And a record of blue rockfish too. Look at this. We're gonna have a feast. I haven't eaten all day, so this sandwich is gonna be amazing. So good too. You can do it with halibut, rockfish, any firm fish. And would you look at that? Something you never thought you'd see me have. An actual fillet knife. I'm gonna get eight fillets off these fish in about two minutes. From my experience, the saltiness from the bacon really adds to this sandwich. So I'm doing three pieces, which I'm cutting in half. So we're gonna have a total of six pieces. Whenever I choose bacon, I always choose the stuff that has the most fat. If I could just choose a slice with all fat, I would, for sure. A little bit of butter on the bread. So that'll be enough to toast right there. Bacon's good, make sure our bread's not too hot. It's getting a nice brown on that. This first filet for the sandwich, I'm taking my time with it just because it should be good for one sandwich. Fits perfectly on this size bread too. Oh, beautiful bread, toasted. Oh, that's the secret of the dish. That's the secret of any sandwich. I guess this side of the fish, I'm not too picky about. So I'll just cut through the belly. All right, that's good right there. Perfect. Mmm. Hmm. Oh, that'll be great. That'll be great. Oh, bread's perfect too. We're gonna even toast the edges. While we wait for that, we'll just cut up a lemon slice. We got several more ingredients, so hang tight. This sandwich is gonna be packed full of flavor. This should be good right there. Now, I actually don't have any salt and pepper, but that's okay. The bacon is gonna take care of the seasoning flavor. Now, I do have shredded coconut flakes, not the sweet kind, it's just the thicker, thicker kind that we can just straight sprinkle over the fish. Yeah, if you can get the ones with the thicker flakes too, that's good. Now, keep an eye on this bacon. We've got a lot of oil. We got the bacon fat. And that's how you know the bacon is good when there's a lot of fat and there's still a ton in there. We can just drop these fish straight in here. That'll start cooking right away. So we got the bacon, coconut flakes, lemon, avocado, sourdough bread, pea sprouts, pesto sauce. I believe that's it. And really quickly clean the rest of these fish. Yeah, we waste a little bit of the fish, but what we waste, we gain back in time saved, 10 times saved. I'm actually gonna save all these guts and use them as crab bait. Sometimes that crab bait is hard to come by. Still got two more fish, but hey, that's enough for a meal from a whole family tomorrow. I'll give this knife a good wipe down. And another secret ingredient, we've got the local made pesto from Sonoma County. I don't like mayo, so any alternative to mayo I can find, I'm gonna use it. And then right after that, boom, boom, boom. Three slices of bacon right on the bottom and this fish kind of fell apart on me. It works a lot better with halibut. And yeah, I'm touching this hot grease, but it's pretty cold out here, so I don't feel it too much. And actually, before we put the other stuff, we're gonna sprinkle that lemon right onto that fish. Mm. Can't forget the avocado. And on top of the avocado, the pea sprouts. Oh yeah, a nice little bed of sprouts. And on top of the pea sprouts, some more bacon. And on top of the bacon, we got more pesto. Woo. Now tell me, this isn't an easy, slightly complicated sandwich. Oh, look at that, my masterpiece. Oh, it's gonna be good. Yes, yes, it's gonna be good. How peaceful is this? I got the sunset behind me, the ocean splashing on the shoreline, three deer hanging out over there. 
a sandwich I just made from the fish I just caught. All right, now let's see if we can keep all this together. I'm not even going to sit for this one. I'm just going to stand. And that toasted bread. Oh, man. You got to have that little zing from the lemon. Mmm. Hmm. Got the peas sprouts, too. Get your veggies in here. Avocado. Sorry. It's not supposed to talk with my mouth full. But this is so good. The lemon is what brings it all together. Always cut the lemon. I'm going to go out on another limb and say that this might just be the best sandwich I ever had. Oh, man, that was good. Oh, yeah. Don't forget about the street fair, July 15th, this year at Stonestown, where the farmer's market is. It's a Saturday from 10 to 5. Everybody's welcome. Hope to see you there.